In the last video, we talked about how essential it is to give your teams a brief, monitor their progress, and then debrief them on all the tasks, the projects, um, reports, anything that you have for them. Now, in this video, I would like to take a deep dive into the brief, and I'm going to give you a really great acronym for you to remember to complete and to use. Now, it's really essential that we give a really clear brief to our teams. I see this quite a lot within my coaching is that managers tend to skip over all the important details. They just expect team members and direct reports just to get it and to then just deliver. But there is a massive gulf between uh, the delivery in some cases of here is the result, here is the expected result. Sometimes there is a massive gap and it's because we don't effectively brief our team members. So here it is. We're going to be talking today about SMEAC. So it stands for situation, mission, execution, any questions, and then confirm understanding. Now, I have been taught this in the military in my time there. I have used it extensively and I've actually taught people how to use it. And it's, the, it's one of the really great simple acronyms that you can just pick up and use to deliver a really effective brief. The, look, the idea of a, of a briefing really is about the succinct transfer of critical information and telling them what the desired result's gonna be. So let's take a deep dive into that. So it starts with situation. Now situation is the overview. It is giving people the background context over why we're here, why it's important, um, and it should be top level. Okay. The second part is mission. This is what is our intent. Uh, it's the specific objectives that we are here to achieve. And this should be really clear. It should be short. It should be pretty concise. And I'll give you an example of all of these uh, a bit later on. Uh, and then it moves down to execution. Now, this is the, the how part of the plan. Okay, and this is where the, the vast bulk of your time is going to be spent. So what do we cover within the execution? So we look at what's the strategies, what are the tactics that we're going to use to get us uh, to have a successful outcome? We're looking at any constraints, any rules, procedures, policies uh, that the, our team members need to be aware of. We're going to give them those. What are the resources and we're looking at time, we're looking at uh, maybe some policies that we need to follow. Uh, maybe it's a workforce plan. So how many people have you got uh, to use on this project? Maybe it's a branding template. Maybe it's a PowerPoint deck or, or whatever that is. It's just context specific. Um, and like I said, that's where the main bulk of the time should be spent on the execution phase. Um, I always finish with that execution phase is, well, Jim, you're in charge or whoever it is, you are leading this project and be very clear about that. Now, the next one is A, and that stands for any questions. Uh, the difference between the military and, and corporate is that in the military, this was the admin. So this was all the logistics around who's doing what, where people are going, um, what I've done. I've effectively moved that into the execution with the workforce plan. Um, what we're going to be looking at uh, here, it's any questions. So it's a chance for your team members to ask any questions, clarify any details uh, that may be missing, that you've missed, or just to really check uh, their understanding. The final part is the C. Now that is around confirm understanding. So it's your opportunity really to confirm the understanding that your team members have. And you, the way you do this is by asking questions, okay? So you could have them all stood there and go, right, what are we here to do? When does it need to be achieved by? What are the deadlines? Can you give me, um, what are the, you know, the resources? Um, what, you know, what, what are some of the challenges and issues and what policies are we using within this? What does success look like? Who are our key stakeholders? So it's a chance for you really to ask them questions to check their understanding. I always ask them, okay, just repeat what of uh, what the mission is. What are we here to do? And how are you going to do that? Um, also, it's a chance for you just to really confirm, uh, you know, what the responsibilities are. You know, who is who is responsible ultimately? So if it's Jim, hey Jim, just confirming you're responsible uh, for this. Here are the timelines just to double check. 
And the way that we're going to check in over the next two weeks, we're going to have um, a check-in on the first team meeting. Then we're going to have a check-in on the one-on-one -on -one and I would like a first draft of the plan. And then, uh, you know, this, the second draft, then I want that a week later. And we're going to, com we're going to uh, communicate this via virtual, via face-to-face, -face, email, whatever that is, just to really confirm understanding to make sure that they've got it. This is really essential. And this is one of the biggest things, uh, the SMEAC brief that's missing from a lot of managers that I coach and I've seen actually throughout the whole of corporate. In military terms, this is just hammered into you day after day. Uh, you get given practical uh, experience with this as well. So it's really key to slow down, to think about your brief and then to deliver an effective brief. Check for understanding to make sure that your team members actually understand uh, what they're here to do. By doing this, you are going to get, number one, you're going to get more alignment. So your team and your team members are going to understand uh, what it is, what's required from a strategic level all the way down to the tactical level to what does it mean for me? Uh, why is this really important uh, if I do this? Number two, you're going to cut waste. So rather than going back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, by clearly articulating what the result's going to be and what that looks like, then you're enabling your team to go away, to do it, to then to come back rather than having multiple uh, conversations and multiple emails and multiple reports that look nothing like what you've asked. You're going to actually give them all those resources and tell them where to go. Uh, you're going to increase engagement because now you transferred the responsibility and ownership to them. They're more likely now to take it away and go, oh, geez, th this is what I'm accountable for. right? Um, and more importantly, it's, it's a really quick and easy way to build capability within your team and you can use this within coaching okay so um, and maybe this could be part of their development plan moving forward uh, if it's a project or a, a report that that they need to actually develop their skills with you can use this approach by briefing them effectively giving them all the resources and letting them have a go and then when they come back you can then give them a bit of feedback uh, within that so it's really essential you give a good uh, really good clear briefs